Repost this on your story if you're against sexism. Repost this on your story if you're against racism. Repost this on your story if you're against ableism, ageism, or homophobia. Whether it's in the form of black squares, forest fires, or other emotion-provoking images, our For You pages are constantly seeing this kind of content. Now, how many of you posted a black square? Okay, great. Now, how many of you know of the 2013 event that actually started the Black Lives Matter movement? Our social medias are constantly under an influx of information about different issues and different movements, so it's understandable that sometimes we get lost. But when we look at the Black Lives Matter movement and the black squares, we can see that a lot of people use this as an excuse to share their support without taking any of the needed actions of being an ally. This is called performative activism. Performative activism is when someone goes through the motions of being an ally without actually taking in the actual information needed and putting in the effort that's required of being an ally. Over the summer, a lot of us learned about how the black squares were actually harming the movement because we were drowning out black voices. This kind of activism is not okay. It's not true activism. Because allyship is not about convenience. It's not a mask that you can put on and take off whenever you feel like it. When a friend says a slur and you let him go because he's a really nice person deep down, that's not being an ally. You have to speak up even when you feel uncomfortable. When a bank in Massachusetts put up a sign for Black Lives Matter, they were quick to take it down after just one complaint. Well, what does this tell us about our society? It tells us that we are quick to assign our support to popular movements, but it's contingent on the fact that no one ever questioned it. We see this in many different things with companies like Disney patting themselves on the back because they have POC characters in their films, but are silent when people point out that these characters are animals for most of the film. Companies were quick to put out LGBT plus clothing or march in pride parades, but only after it became socially acceptable. A few years ago, when I was in one of my classrooms, a few of my classmates were coming back from their sex ed class that was discussing the different types of sexualities. One of the kids walked in and said loudly, well, what even is pansexuality? It sounds like someone's just making it up for attention. And I wanted to disappear because I had been openly pansexual since the seventh grade. And that boy, he knew that. And so I had to watch while the same people who claimed to be my friends nodded along and the teacher simply started her class. So I had to ask myself, why didn't they speak up? Why didn't the teacher speak up? Why didn't I speak up? Well, it's because of this culture around performative activism. The same people who nodded along to his comment were the same ones to claim that they couldn't be homophobic because they supported me. They used their kind of faux support of me to defend themselves. And that is not being an ally. We have to listen. We have to learn and we have to speak up no matter how uncomfortable it may make us feel. But this isn't the only thing holding us back from progressing as a society. In 2016, when Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump ran for the US presidency, a large percentage of women said that they wouldn't trust Hillary Clinton to make the important decisions. An even greater amount of those same people said that they wouldn't trust a woman to be president at all. Now, why is this? It's because of something called internalized sexism. It's when a woman holds prejudice against other women for being women. We see this in many different areas with internalized racism, internalized homophobia, or internalized ableism. It's one of the reasons why we have colorism in India or the trope of the homophobe being gay in the US. When I was coming to terms with my own queerness, I was under the impression that to be queer, one had to be hyper-masculine or hyper-feminine. Those were the only two options. 
but it took talking to others and sitting down with myself to realize that that wasn't true. It's not glamorous to have to assess your own language, your behaviors, and your tone, but it's necessary so that you can improve your relationships with others, but also your relationship with yourself. But look, I've given you a lot of problems and not a lot of solutions. So let me give you three steps to being a better ally. Step one, be willing to listen to both sides. So this means even if you may disagree with an issue or whatever's going on, be willing to hear out and read both sides of a story. And yes, that does mean sometimes listening to Fox News or BuzzFeed. Step two, tackle your own biases. Like I said, it's not a glamorous process. No one really wants to admit that they may hold some kind of prejudice, but it's important that you sit down and realize why you're thinking things, why you're saying things, and why you're behaving a certain way so that you can be a more empathetic person. Step three, listen to others. Whether you agree or disagree on a certain topic, that doesn't really matter. Just be willing to listen to those who are experiencing an issue so that you can learn more and be more understanding. Don't perform, just act. And that's why you have to listen, you have to learn, and you have to speak up. Thank you.